This video will look at streaming video through your house. Um, there are at least three ways that I use to stream video. And one of them is using the Apple TV, which will stream uh, whatever's in your iTunes library and gives you access to the iTunes store so you can rent and buy. Uh, Plex, which is a, a media center, and you can get mobile apps for that. And there, there is a link to some videos I've done on Plex Media Center and players in the description. And then I've discovered another one called Air Video, and it's just for iOS. So it's for iPad, iPod, iPhone. And Air Video requires you to download the appropriate app from the App Store. And there's the, uh, the app there for uh, link to iTunes. It's $2.99 for the actual uh, app. And you also need to download and install a server. And it's available for Windows and for Mac. So there's the, the website. Once you install the server, it's up in the taskbar. And it's up here. And let's go into Preferences. And there's not much to set up. You have to tell it, first of all, you want the server to run, yes or no. Then add folder. Where exactly is your media that you want to stream? Now, you can add uh, from the C drive, your local drive. So this one's going out to an actual, the iTunes media library, which is on a, another Mac in another room. Uh, attached with the, on an external hard drive. So uh, it's found the iTunes media library. So if I want to add a folder of TV shows, I could just add that folder. So I've gone into the TV shows. I just want to add that folder and open, and it adds it to the shared folders. Now you can also add iTunes playlists. So that's an actual playlist of the music videos. So I went into the iTunes playlist, uh, and that would open iTunes and you can select which playlist you want, just add it. Um, these ones are just from a local drive, so from my users folder in the movies folder. So I can add a, a folder and just go out to uh, movies here and pick anything that's in here and add that. So I've got a few folders there that I've added. Anything that's inside those, those shared folders can be viewed uh, on your uh, Air Video app, so I could I could watch that on my iPad or on my iPhone, or I could watch it remotely because you have you can have remote access. Uh, the other thing is to look at it can convert files uh, on the fly, so you can actually play them while they're being converted or convert them first. I haven't actually used that because I've I have all my videos are actually uh, at, in the correct format. Um, the settings. I want the server to start at login, and I want uh, I've ticked require password because I'm going to be be um, using this remotely. Uh, I want to protect it by having a password. Uh, and if I want uh, videos to be converted, then I can actually create a folder where I want those to go. Uh, so I might have one in back down here. Go into documents into say movies and put a new folder and call it converted videos and go back here I'm going to add the folder where I want any conversions to be placed so I think I'll put it here converted videos there so anything that has to be converted that's where I want it to go so I can find it uh, remote you don't need to do anything about custom port remote I want to be able to access this video, uh, this um, server from the internet. And in order to do that, it gives me a pin. So that when I add the server on the player, I need to put that pin in. And because there's a password on that also protects uh, you from you know, anybody randomly be, uh, getting hold of your, your iPad or something and, and being able to view all your media, you put the, the um, password on it. Automatically map ports, I've ticked that because if you've got a router that has UPnP or NAT, uh, you don't have to go into the router and open a port. All you do is, is 
detect that. Test your connection to see if it can be reached remotely. This one's accessible. Uh, subtitles, so I've got my language in English. And any logs, well, I haven't actually looked at what the logs do. Um, but sort of that's all you do to set it up. Uh, and it lives up in your, your menu bar at the top there. So the server is configured in the task bar, in the menu bar, and it's now looking at, let's go back to this, this is the, uh, the iPad. So I've downloaded Air Video for the iPad. Open the app. And I already have a server that's been added. That's the uh, other computer I have that has the main library on it. So to play anything, I can just go into that server and just pick a show. So wherever I am, I might pick this one. Uh, and it, depending on how you've actually set up your uh, media, will look at, at determine on how it appears in the air video. So for example, this show McLeod has several seasons but I haven't um, put them into any separate folder. So I have, there's five seasons. And normally I'd have season one in a folder and season two in a folder. And I didn't set it up that way. And that's reflected in how it's showing it to me here. Uh, on the other hand, I might have something like Fresh Fields, which is four seasons, but I've set them up so uh, within my um, finder so that season one's all, uh, all are in the same folder. To play anything, it's simply a matter of just touching it and hitting the play. And it will start playing on your iPad. With no lag, depending again on your wireless network. So if you've got wireless Zen and it's quite fast, it's not going to lag. It's, it's The quality is just as good as the original. Absolutely the best streaming thing I've ever seen. But how do you actually add a server? So let's do a plus. The uh, server I'm working off here is off the laptop, so I've added a server to the MacBook Pro. Now I can actually add it, uh, I mean it's already added it for me there immediately, MacBook Pro, it's already there, and I can go into the MacBook Pro, put in a password because that's what I set up before, that I wanted to have a password to protect anything, particularly when I'm accessing it remotely. So a password to actually get into that server, and these are the only things I've actually put on this one just to test it out. So there's a, you know, one season of who done it, uh, and I can again pick the the episode that I want and just play, and that will start playing on the Apple TV screen. I won't go any further. Now, what what about a, a video that actually needs converting? So I put I go back into the MacBook Pro. I've actually put in a video here that's a Windows format. So really it shouldn't play on here because the iPad doesn't play Windows formats, but I want to actually convert this one. So it's got underneath here, play with live conversion. So actually play it as it's been converted. Let's try that one. And it will play that, that um, let's turn the sound down. And it's playing that video, it's only a YouTube video, uh, as it's converting it. Stop. And once, and once it's converted, that conversion will remain in that folder. So whatever you have, what if you've downloaded, you might have .avi files or um, not just MP4s. It's going to convert on the fly or convert ahead. So if I did, did that one, it's going to say, where do you want to convert this video? I want to go to that folder, the converted vid videos. It's queuing them. So it's actually putting them up here. And it's, you can see it's already converted. It's finished, and now, if I go back, there's now two videos in there, and this one's the converted one. So it's got play. It doesn't have convert anymore. I can add it to iTunes as well and, and uh, expand my media library. It's pretty good. Now, the other way to add the server, this one's automatic, but what if you wanted to add it a different way? Let's delete the server and add it again. Now you can add it manually. You can add it by its pin. Every server has a pin. The, what, the way you can, you can also add the server, if, you don't want, if it doesn't do it automatically, you can enter the address manually yourself so you can find the actual 
IP address of the server, put the port in and add it that way, or you can enter the server pin. And if you go back to your, your um, server in the preferences, there is somewhere here, remote, it gives you a pin. There's the pin there. So that would be what I'd type in on this screen on the iPad, the, the, the pin. And it doesn't matter that you're seeing it because I'm going to delete this server and save it. Tap it. So it validates the pin and it actually adds the server there with the actual pin um, highlighted. So if it doesn't find your server automatically, you can enter the, the server by its pin. Now it can go back into there, put in the password, and I can see all the videos. Now this works remotely. I have tested it. It's a bit hard to show you this, but I have been you know, out of the house with my iPad and this does work. You can access your uh, media as long as the server that uh, has, uh, the, the computer that has the server is switched on, turned on. As long as it is, it can be asleep, but as long as it's on, you'll be able to use this. And you, you know it works because you go back up to your server up here, to preferences, under remote, you test the connection, and and uh, no, this one's accessible. If it's not, then uh, you have to do a bit of troubleshooting. I haven't actually had to do anything; it just works. Uh, whereas with Plex, it, it required a little bit of troubleshooting. Uh, try this one. This is the best streaming um, media uh, app that I've seen. It's just simple, and it works.